Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So firstly, everyone, welcome to CS196. Uh, so as some of you know, this is the honor section for CS125. Our goals for this class are, so the goals for today are going to be to go over the main course goals, uh, to give an overview of the syllabus, and finally to answer any questions you might have about the class. All right, so firstly, as some of you may know, this is a project-based class. So I'm just going to ask you guys, take a piece of paper, um, Write an idea you have. That could be for an app. It could be maybe a theme. Um, it could be a topic like health or security. Anything. Those guys can pass these down. Write an idea or a topic. Just anything that you want to work on this semester or at some point in your career. And once you're done with your idea, fold it up into a paper airplane. Okay, great. Uh, is everyone done or almost done? Okay, so I want the people in the front to throw your paper airplanes backwards and back throw it towards me. If you're in the middle, throw whatever you want, I suppose. You can throw whenever. All right, if there's a new piece of paper around you, pick it up, take a look at it. See the other ideas around the classroom. Okay. So as you know, CS196 is the majority, it's a project-based class. So one of the biggest goals of the class is that we want you to work on, I want it flying, okay. We want you to work on an expansive project for the majority of the semester. So we want to give you as much freedom as possible for your project. So in previous years, we've seen people make a poverty simulator game. We've seen people do self-driving uh, RC cars. We've seen like a Reddit a data visualization tool. We've seen people do a wide variety of things. And I want to emphasize that we really want to give you the freedom to make whatever you want. If you have a billion dollar idea, but you don't know where to start, or if you just want to have something to put in your resume, th this is a great way to get involved and to get a, like, a first step in the right direction. And a big thing we want to teach you is how to collaborate efficiently. Because as a computer scientist or programmer, it's very unlikely you'll be working by yourself to make anything. So we want to teach you how to work in a group, how to use GitHub, how to, use, how to work under a project manager so that when you go and work on a real project, like in an internship or your job, you have a good idea of how to do that. And a big thing is, you don't have to do this by, you don't have to do this by yourself. You don't have to suddenly think, OK, how will I start a project from scratch? We're going to guide you through a mentor who will help plan out your project and help guide you through the process of making your project. And I want to make it clear that your mentor is not going to make your project for you. You will have total ownership over your project because you're going to make it yourself. Your mentor is just going to guide you through that process. And project experience is very, very important. Because firstly, learning to work on a structured project is, very, is a very useful skill because you will use that for any job as a computer scientist, be, be that in like making the next Facebook, making the next Snapchat, or if you're working in security in the security team, or if you're working on Wall Street selling stocks uh, using computers, you will need to know how to work in a group. Secondly, as a freshman, a lot of you might not have uh, any project in your resume, which is super useful when you apply to internships. So having a first project is a great way to boost your resume, make you stand out from other freshmen, and have a great talking point to uh, recruiters. And secondly, I mentioned this before, but a lot of you may not know how to start your project. You might have a great idea, but you're just unsure of what the first steps of starting this project might be. So we want to guide you through that process and make sure that when you do start this project that could be something you've been planning for years and years, you know how to do it properly and get, uh, do it justice. Secondly, we're gonna, we want to teach you some core fundamental uh, CS technologies, Bash and Git. So Bash and Git is essential for any computer scientist. You will use this. I personally use this almost daily. 
So first, let's go through what Bash is. So if you've watched any hacker scene in a movie, you'll probably see the floating green text and a lot of fast typing. That's Bash. And an issue with us teaching you Bash is you'll see that in movies and not enjoy these scenes ever again, because you'll realize you're doing things wrong. But Bash is super, super useful. Uh, it's a command line interface, so essentially, you can control your computer, run commands, um, create files, pretty much anything that you can normally do with the mouse through your command line, except you'll be faster, have more control, and be able to um, automate processes so that you can save time, save yourself time. It is a learning process, but Bash is something that you'll be using almost daily as a computer scientist. Secondly, we're going to teach you Git. Git is an incredibly useful tool for any computer scientist again, because version, so firstly, Git is version control. So what is version control? When you're working on a project, uh, you want to be able to keep track of all your previous iterations of the project. Because let's say you add a new update, and suddenly your, your app breaks. What do you do? You have nothing to fall back on unless you have version control. Uh, Git is used by most enterprises. This is the like, industry standard for version control. It allows you to collaborate securely with other developers. It allows you to um, you know, have file recovery. It's very, very useful, and it's something that you should learn because you'll use it in your classes uh, from now till you graduate, pretty much, and beyond that, internships and work. Finally, we also want to teach you a new programming language. We want to teach you Rust. So something I want to emphasize here is that we want to teach you programming concepts beyond what you're learning in 125 or 126 or any other class that you might be in. Uh, we aren't just going to teach you, here's how you do a for loop, here's how you declare a function. Like, we will teach you those things, but the biggest thing we want to teach you is programming concepts that you can take from this class and apply in any other language, in any other uh, class. And we hope that by teaching you this through Rust, uh, you will become very proficient and familiar with the language. So Rust is uh, a language not taught in many schools. It's very powerful and it's very useful, but it's one that you might not see everywhere. So it's great to have this under your tool belt because It'll show uh, recruiters, and you can learn, show recruiters that you're different from the pack. And also, it's something that you should know because you need to expand your uh, programming toolbox as a freshman. All right, so who go over the syllabus? The syllabus can be found on the 196 website. Uh, the hyperlink is up there. You can also just Google CS196, and it's one of the first links. Um, so let's go with prerequisites for the class. So what do you need to take 196? Nothing. You know, you know anything. But no, seriously, you really don't need to know anything to take this class because we want to take uh, someone who has zero coding experience or even people who have an internship, two internships, and a whole bunch of project experience and teach you something new because we want to guide you through an expansive project that will teach you new things and teach you about new technologies you may not have used before. Okay, grading. So uh, firstly, Let's go through the biggest thing, project. The project is going to make up the majority of your grade. That's 65%. And I'll go, down, go through the breakdown of that later on. But this is a project-based class, and we want to give a huge emphasis on the project. Uh, secondly, lecture attendance. So last semester, this was a flipped classroom style, but we wanted to change it again to make it more of a regular lecture. So attendance to lecture is 10%, which is basically free points, if you think about it. If you just show up and sit here for an hour, you get 10% of your grade. Uh, then we'll have homeworks. Homeworks will be 25% of your grade. Uh, that will be majority prior learn questions. It should be very simple. It should take around, we're hoping, 20 minutes to an hour, maybe two to three times a week. Uh, and so that's basically to cement what you're learning in lecture. Finally, we're giving you guys a whole letter grade of extra credit. Because I want to emphasize this class isn't about breaking you and making you think, oh, CS is so hard. We really want to just take ideas that you have and make those things into reality. And we don't want you to get a bad grade because of it. So we're giving you guys a whole letter grade of extra credit. A big chunk of that will be answering questions in lecture. There'll be EC homeworks. But we want to emphasize that you guys are going to get a good grade in this class. As long as you do all the work you're supposed to and you do a little bit of the extra credit, you will get a good grade. We just want you to learn important things and not have to worry about, oh, no, I only got an 80 on this last assignment, that kind of stuff. We want you to do well, and we're going to help you through that, get, uh, do well and get a good grade. Okay, project breakdown. So let's go through the steps of how we uh, develop our project. So firstly, you're going to fill up a form that will uh, have your interests, uh, pri uh, prior experience, and what you want to work on um, for the semester. Then we'll pair you up with other students with similar interests and a project manager with the most experience in that, feel in that field or topic. Uh, then you'll work with your group to brainstorm and come with an idea 
that we call an MVP, the minimum viable product. So that's essentially, by the end of the semester, what is the least you want to have accomplished. So it's like if you're going to make, um, so my group last semester, they made a Reddit data visualization tool. So we thought by the end of the semester, the simplest thing we want to do is have a few Reddits that you click on and get the data from. And we expanded to be any Reddit, a subreddit that they wanted. They could type that in, and it would get the data dynamically. Similarly, the MVP is just what was the bare minimum you'd like to learn and accomplish, but if you have time, we can definitely go beyond that and uh, implement new features that you may have not have considered earlier. And then you'll work on the project throughout the semester. So in the lecture, we won't talk about the project a whole lot. We're going to teach you content and concepts that you can use in your projects, but we're not going to teach you how to do your project here because all your projects will be very unique. And grading. Okay, so 30% of your project grade will be on the review. So uh, by the end of the semester, so I want to make clear that we aren't going to think that if you guys are new programmers and your project wasn't as phenomenal as another group that we're going to grade you poorly. No, the way your project ends up isn't our biggest criteria here. We want to see how you develop the project. We want to teach you how to efficiently develop projects. So if you're communicating clearly, if you're um, uh, using the, your scrum board properly, if you're committing frequently, if you're communicating with your peers and your project manager well, that's what we're, we're really uh, testing you on. We want to see, can you collaborate effectively? Uh, so this can be found in the syllabus, by the way, all the grading. Uh, but I, I just want to emphasize, your project is not going to be graded on the quality at the end. Obviously, we want you to make something good, but don't feel disheartened if maybe because you're new to programming, you weren't, able to, you weren't able to make the app you're dreaming of, because you'll always be, have time to develop this later on, and we're not going to grade you poorly because of that. So actually, before I continue, does any, anyone have any questions at the moment about anything I've talked about, grading, anything like that? Yeah. So attendance, right now, we're, we're still working. We're, we're planning having a Kahoot or a Google form through the lecture. So we'll ask a couple questions. And if you answer the questions, you'll get credit for being here. And if you get them correct, we'll give you extra credit. Any other questions? Yeah. Sure. So last semester, an interesting thing you might have heard was, uh, might have been a bit much because we were learning two programming languages. This time, we decided to cut it down and just teach you one programming language, Rust. So last semester, you did Rust and Haskell. We're just going to do Rust this semester. And uh, we're expecting it to be around 4.5 to 7 hours a week, roughly. Could be less, could be more. It just depends on, um, it depends on the person. Any other questions? OK, great. OK, so if you want to find any of the resources, they're all on the website again. That's linked up there. Uh, you can find these slides on the website. You can find syllabus. Everything's up there on the website, sorry. And we'll be using Piazza for general questions and Discord for communication within the group. Uh, the reason we're using Discord is because, as some of you may use Slack, Slack limits you at 10,000 messages. And because we have so many people in the class and we have a lot of things going on at once, we want to use Discord because that's unlimited messages. And um, it has the same features as Slack. And here's the expected time commitment. So, we expect you to be in lecture for around two hours a week, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Uh, to 7.50 p.m. Project meetings, you'll, you'll meet with your group once a week uh, or maybe once every two weeks, and that will be 30 minutes to an hour. These meetings aren't for, uh, are basically just for you to catch up with your PM and for them to assign work for you. Uh, we'll have homework. Homework's going to be around one to two hours a week. Uh, we don't expect it to be particularly difficult because we want it to basically just be stuff we covered in lecture that you're just going to cement your knowledge on through a Prairie Learn quiz. Uh, and then out of meeting project work. So you will be working independently on your projects. Uh, we're not going to give you time, like assigned time for that, but we expect you to be responsible and handle that your, on your own. So you can spend one, two hours a week, and we think you have a really great project. But let's say you want to get all done early, or for some reason you're busy one week and you're going to catch up the next week, so you do more work, things like that. That's totally up to you, but one, two hours a week will give you a great project by the end of the semester. And finally, yeah, that gives you about 4.5 to 7 hours a week uh, on the project, on, on the class. So does anyone have any questions about the class as a whole? This is a one credit hour class. Yeah. Any other questions about the class? OK, great. I'll be up here for a little bit. Um, we'll be starting Bash uh, next lecture. This is just an info session. But starting next week, we'll be starting actual lecture content. So we'll go into Bash and Git. 
and then we'll be assigning projects by the third or fourth week. So I'll be up here for the next half hour or so, so please jump if you have any questions.